Uh, thanks, Steve. I'll share a couple of things. I remember years ago, I had a client that wouldn't go on a skiing vacation because their life insurance policy wasn't in place. And that was limiting their life experience. Well, when my daughter turned 16, she said, Dad, I want to go skydiving for my birthday. I was like, oh my gosh, I've got wow. five kids. But then I thought, you know what? I've got human life value protection. I've got cash value whole life policy. So we went. And Steve, it was one of the most amazing experiences that I ever had. And that I was able to be with my daughter made it even better, right? That's amazing. And one of my favorite things that we've talked about oftentimes is the idea of human life value. It's, you know, when people think about life insurance, they're not necessarily thinking about how valuable they actually are. That's what life insurance is all about, right? Traditional life insurance. Then you open up a whole new world of possibilities when we put cash in. And so Barry, maybe to segue that to living, live your best life, level up, why would someone use life insurance versus a traditional bank? Yeah. And this is what a lot of people don't understand is that these policies, when we say properly structured, we're taking the majority of someone's premium and putting that into cash value. So think of it like a, a turbocharged savings account. And frankly, most of the time, we're outperforming stock market investments anyway. But if you think about a way to turbocharge your cash value, and you're getting tax advantages along the way, you don't have to worry about, well, am I gonna earn a very low rate of return? There, there were a time where we saw with banks, they were paying less than 1% interest. It's higher today, but we don't know how long that's gonna last. But any money you make in a bank or a CD, it's still taxable. And if you do put money, say into a CD, you're locking that money up. The benefit of these policies is usually a higher rate of return, tax advantage growth, and you're not locking up your money because you do have access to that liquid cash as right. soon as 30 days after the policies in force. But you get that tax advantage growth. And then also you're you're getting, I just want to point out as a former and recovering attorney, uh, state asset protection. Right. So uh, if you, depending on what state you're in, that whole account could be protected from creditors as well. If you've got some wealth, if you want to have some wealth, which is a pretty big group, then state asset protection is a huge thing to take advantage of as well. A lot of people don't know about it. Yeah. And I love that you're an attorney, right? Your perspective in regards to high cash value, whole life insurance is much different than the average person. So when we work with wealthy individuals, the estate planning, the protection, the asset protection, that's a huge part of what we do. And even these high cash value whole life policies help people that do have lots of wealth in those areas where you have that expertise. Sure. And, and it's a privilege to having coached wealthy people and to now be doing that in this context and to have a guy like you with working on these policies, Barry is is a true value to anybody visiting. So I just want to point that out. There's a difference between a policy with more cash versus life insurance versus less cash versus life insurance. When Barry is referring to an 80-20, 60-40, these kinds of numbers, Barry, I know you're going to introduce this, but he's referring to the amount of cash ultimately in the policy versus the amount of base or life insurance itself. So the cost of life insurance, how much life insurance, how much cash. And it, it makes a big difference, right, Barry, when you're talking these numbers. It really does. And one size does not fit all. We want to make sure that we're always pursuing and going after a policy that is going to best meet the client's goals. It's not my goal. It's not your goal. We're here to do the best thing for all of our clients. And working with us here at INE, that's what our clients get. They get the best of the best. They get hands-on personal treatment. I'm designing those policies for my clients myself. I, I do that. I want to make sure that I'm the guy seeing their numbers. So when they look at the illustration, they're seeing something that I've put together specifically for them to meet their goals. Steve, what we're looking at here are going to be the top two companies in the industry, Lafayette Life 
and Penn Mutual. Both companies are mutual companies. They pay dividends, which is great. We only work with the top mutual insurance companies in the industry. With our first example with Lafayette Life, we have the base and PUA split of 60, 40, 70, 30, 80, 20, 90, 10. We wanna go through these in detail. And I'll, I'll speak frankly, a lot of the agents out there that promote a 60, 40 split, they're doing it because it pays them a higher commission. And I've even heard agents say, it's a better policy for clients. In my 25 years of doing this, I've never seen that to be true. So it's usually driven by commissions. Boy, so really, this is not a commission-focused strategy. You're really focusing on the client with it. That's what we want. And that's why a lot of times our clients lean towards a 90-10 or an 80-20 split. These illustrations are based on a $100,000 a year premium going into the policy. Then we do what's called an RPU. That's reduced paid up. In simple terms, after 20 years, there's no more money going into the policy, but the cash value still continues to grow. Okay, jargon alert. So RPU is basically, a lot of people think these policies are really inflexible. And this is actually the opposite of what is true, right, Barry? So if you're talking about a reduced paid up, you're really talking about taking some point in time where the person can reduce the overall coverage death benefit and consider the policy paid at that point. Is that a good way of way to describe it? That's correct. Okay, cool. Yeah, no more money going in. And what I like to emphasize, and you brought it up, it's flexible. You could do an RPU in 10 years. You could do an RPU in 40 years. Hmm. I've done an RPU here in this example in 20 years. And even in the 21st year and beyond, the cash value is still growing. That's what's so great about these policies is you get a guaranteed rate of return and you're earning an annual dividend. So even after a person is done funding, they're still making money. That's really cool to think about. If they want to, if somebody with some assets is watching and thinking, wow, this is a great place to put my money, they can then decide to put some lump sums in. And they need to kind of spread that out a little bit, but they can do a reduced paid up. That's right. Yep. It's all flexible. Cool. So this hundred thousand a year premium that's going in on our 60, 40 PUA to base split in year one, the number is 69,109. That's the first year cash value. The death benefit is 1.6 million. However, there's only a small portion of that that's whole life insurance. We always use a term writer. That term writer raises the MEC limit to allow more cash to go into the policy. Jargon alert, we got another one. So MEC limit, if somebody's brand new and they're wondering what in the world's the MEC limit, my the way I always try to tell it, you might have a better way, Barry, is that the IRS is gonna limit how much cash that you can just put into a policy without some kind of a formula to make sure you have enough life insurance in there, right? So you don't wanna trigger that limit by putting too much cash in and not having enough life insurance to balance it out, thus the 10%, right? We need at least that generally, you can maybe sometimes go even less than 10% life insurance. And I know this is a simple way of putting it, but that's why we have that, right? You have a minimum amount of life insurance you have to have. Yeah, and we take care of that for our clients. Clients never have to worry about the MEC limit as, follow, as long as they follow what we teach them. Right. But you're correct. This 1.668 million of death benefit, this is the least amount of death benefit required for the 60-40 split. So I don't want anyone out there purchasing more life insurance than they absolutely need in order for the policy not to MEC. Now, as a side note, there are times, and you know this, Steve, as an estate attorney, where clients come to us, all they want is death benefit. They don't care about the cash value because they're getting a policy for the asset protection, the legacy planning. They want death benefit so that when they pass away, they have large amounts of death benefit coming to family members, beneficiaries, tax-free. So there is a, a use for a policy that's all based on death benefit as well. But in these cases, when we're doing 60, 40, 
or a 90-10 or anything in between. The focus is minimum death benefit, maximum cash value. And you were kind of reading my mind, minimum death benefit, maximum cash in this scenario. And I was going to ask you, so you, you hit it. You know, sometimes people want more death benefit, thus you may have 60-40. That may be fitting to their goals. So depending on the goals, that can change, but people need to know why this change happens and what is the purpose of it so they can decide how much cash they want to put into their policy. Someone might have a goal of a 60-40. We're not saying don't ever do a 60-40 because it might fit a person's goals. But generally, when people are coming to insurance and estates, they're viewing our videos and YouTube channel, et cetera, they want a policy with maximum cash value. And in that case, the 60-40 isn't the best fit for the person that wants maximum cash value. Can you think of a situation where someone got really excited that they were able to get so much cash into a policy? Maybe they showered you with praise. Real estate happens often, but I remember one particular time I got a call from one of my female clients in the Midwest and she said, Barry, I remember you telling me that I can take policy loans from my whole life policy. Is that right? And she was a real estate investor anyway. She said, I'm, I've got this deal. We're ready to buy, but we don't have enough cash in our savings right now, but we don't want to pass up this deal. Can I really take a policy loan? It's like, yeah, pick up the phone, call the insurance company at their 800 number or go online, request the loan. They're going to have that money to you within three to seven days. She bought the real estate, Steve, and the rate of return was incredible. It was a deal that she didn't want to pass up. Those stories happen on a pretty regular basis because I work with a lot of real estate investors. I myself am a real estate investor, but I love hearing those success stories of clients. People love these policies that we're designing because we're using companies that give clients maximum cash value and minimum death benefit. Teaching clients, one, get maximum cash value in your policy, but we also show you how to continue to make money in your policy and whatever investment you choose to put money into. We call that the velocity of money. There oh. is no lost opportunity cost when someone takes a policy loan. I love that term, velocity of money. Banks are very well aware of how to keep money moving. And this is what we want you guys to be able to do. So I'm going to riff on this for a minute. We're going to go through 60, 40, all the way through 90, 10. Follow okay. me, everyone, on this, because it's very powerful what we're going to see. As I mentioned, the first year cash value of the 60, 40 is 69,000. And the 30th year cash value is 4.3 million. Well, look over to the 70, 30. You notice that in year one, there's 75,996 of cash value as compared to 69,000 in the 60, 40. And then we get to year 30 and it's 4.38 million. So you see some difference there. Well, then it gets even better with the 80-20 split. That means 80% of your premium is going toward PUA, cash value. Only 20% is going towards the life insurance component. Year one, the total cash value is 82875 compared to the 6040, which was 69000 And year 30 is $4.45 million compared to the 6040 at $4.32 million. Now this is where it gets really fun for me, and that is the 9010. The 9010 in year one, we see $90,006 in first year cash value. And that's huge. Most of your premiums going straight to cash. And in year 30, $4,532,000 compared to the 60-40 split of 4320000 So there's over $200,000 more in the 30th year with the 90-10 and a lot more cash value in the early years. Most people want a 90-10 that get into the infinite banking concept because they want to start taking policy loans relatively early to buy real estate, to invest in their own business. Maybe they have some higher credit card interest rates that they want to pay off and use a policy because loan rates today, 5%. You get a policy loan, you're going to pay 5% 
as opposed to 18 or 20 or 22. Or maybe you're a business owner and you purchase or lease equipment. On the back end, you might have some high interest on those leases, where if you take a policy loan, pay cash for the equipment, you can see, we'll show you ways where you can save a ton of money, but also you're still making money on your total cash value in the policy. It's pretty exciting, Barry, to see the 90-10 and the difference that a properly designed focused policy can make, even among different kinds of high cash value policies. Yeah, really, they're not all designed the same. And you need to make sure that when you're looking at your own numbers, that you're getting exactly what you want for your goals. So I'll run a quick little uh, scenario here or two. Look in year five on the 90-10, the fifth year cash value is 512,000. In the 60-40 design, the fifth year cash value is 458,000. Well, obviously there's more money in the 90-10. You've got $512,000 there. So if you're saying, you know what, I'm not gonna touch any of the money for five years, but I want as much money as possible that I can get my hands on with a policy, the 90-10 is gonna be the best fit for you. Mm -hmm. If we look at the 10th year, you say, I'm not gonna touch this money for 10 years, but then I need to take out a million dollar loan. In the 10th year of the 90-10, the cash value is 1,166,000, as opposed to the year 10 of the 60-40, at a million eighty-eight thousand, I share that because people are going to have different time frames. There are some of my clients that say, "I do want policy loans in thirty to sixty days." There are some clients that say, "You know, I'm going to let this ride a few years. I don't have anything upcoming, but I can see myself buying another real estate deal in the next five to ten years. Where's the best place to put my cash?" This is why this is such a powerful asset. You can do such interesting things with it when it's properly designed. Now, you mentioned Penn Mutual. You mentioned Lafayette Life, two of our top carriers at this point. How we vet companies. What are we looking at? Yeah, and we do vet companies. We only work with the best of the best. We've already gone through the Lafayette Life numbers, the 60, 40, 70, 30, 80, 20, and 90, 10. I want to share with everyone the Penn Mutual designs because again, one company may not be right for everybody, and it usually isn't. So as we look at the Penn Mutual 6040, the first year cash value is 53,000 as compared to Lafayette's first year cash value of 69,000. And Steve, right off the bat, someone might say, why would I ever go with Penn Mutual? Well, with a 6040, that first year cash value doesn't make sense. But look at the 25th year cash value and the 20th year and the 30th year cash value. Notice that as time goes on, the Penn Mutual 6040 outperforms the Lafayette 6040. And we're going to see this as we go through. So I'm going to riff again here for a minute. Penn Mutual 7030 is 61,000 in first year cash value compared to the 7030 of Lafayette at 75. Again, Lafayette has very high cash value even in their 70 in their 7030 design. But look at the 20th year. By the time you get to year 20, Penn Mutual is just over 3 million. Lafayette Life's about around 2.9 million. And from every year thereafter, the 20th year and beyond, Penn Mutual will always have higher cash value than Lafayette. But this is where it gets really fun. In the PUA to base split of the Penn Mutual 8020, again, we see first year and fifth year cash value is lower with Penn Mutual than Lafayette Life. But look what happens in year 10. They're almost identical, right? 1.136 million compared to 1.138 million. Steve, if someone comes to me and says, Barry, I don't really care so much about my early year cash value. I want the highest cash value in my retirement years because I'm, I'm looking at this as a retirement plan. And that's what's so neat about these policies. They check many boxes. There are multiple stacks of benefits. Guaranteed. Right. When do you want to take the money out, basically? Yeah, exactly. So not only is it your own bank now, but you're also setting yourself up for a future tax-free stream of retirement income, which is huge. 
because most people investing in retirement plans today, it's all tax deferred. And who knows what tax rates will be 10, 20, 30 years from now. That's a big risk to be taking for that type of unknown. Mm -hmm. Well, from about the 12th year forward, it's around year 11 or year 12 with Penn Mutual's 80-20. Their 80-20 design outperforms Lafayette's 90-10 design. So if you look at Penn Mutual's 20th year in their 80-20 design, the cash value is 3.12 million, where Lafayette's cash value is 2.9 million. In the 25th year of Penn Mutual, it's just over 4 million. Lafayette is at 3.68 million. And then this is where it's huge. So retirement years, this person says, hey, I don't want to put any more money in. 30 years have gone by, I'm done. The cash value is 5.2 million in Penn Mutual's 80-20 as compared to Lafayette's 90-10 of 4.5 million. We're talking $700,000 difference in a 30-year time frame. Same premiums for 20 years, same amount of money went in, not as much cash value early on in the Penn Mutual 80-20, but they're killing it when it comes to retirement money, right? There's a $700,000 difference in 30 years. So if you're a client that says, I want as much money as I can get in retirement, the Penn Mutual 80-20 no one can touch it in the industry. They don't have a 90-10, but for greatest cash value in retirement, Penn Mutual is the way to go. Part of the expertise is picking the right company for the right strategy, Barry. And I think we've talked about the fact that Lafayette early years and also lump sums. And this is right now, right? If someone's watching this a year from now, maybe we've added some companies and we, somebody else rose to the occasion. So something something to all, always be aware of when people are checking out these videos. Yeah, as independent advisors, we only work with the best of the best companies out there. So if in 2025, we see a better company, we'll be putting them into the mix. The last thing I want to mention here, Steve, although the PUA to base split with Penn Mutual's 80-20 is a lower split, we see that over time, there ends up being more cash in that design as compared to the Lafayette Life 9010. But also look at the death benefit. The death benefit in year one with Penn Mutual is 2.8 million compared to Lafayette's 1.5. And this is a big reason why Lafayette's 9010, it's an awesome design for high early cash value. And if you're one of those people that want to take loans early on, this is who we usually recommend is Lafayette in their 90-10 design because you're not having to purchase as much life insurance, but now go 30 years out. Not only with Penn Mutual do you have higher cash value of 5.2 million, the death benefit is 7.9 million compared to Lafayette 6 million. Mm -hmm. So you're getting $700,000 more of cash value and you're getting almost two million more in death benefit. Guys, whether you're you're starting out or whether you're well established with some capital to shelter, safe capital, we call it, you know, this is pivotal for you to have the right design, right company. So we always encourage people to look at their own numbers wherever you're watching. There's gonna be a calendar link for Barry. And I know Barry would love to talk to you love to help you understand this for yourself. Also, if you do have questions, leave it in the comments. We really want to know what you think, if this makes sense to you, if you think that this could have been clearer, if you think that you're excited about it, whatever, you know, we will respond to your comment. And with that, thanks so much for joining us.